Well, it's time to uh, step back a moment. This is my bee breaker. It's one in the background here. Uh, but this is where I started from. This is tool is made by Ken Tool, or the Ken Tool makes one like it. This is old, doesn't have the manufacturer's name any longer on it. But this is where I came from. It's never failed me to bake, break a bead, but it had some drawbacks. One is this portion of the tool, which breaks the bead, if you watch it, it comes down in an arc and pushes down towards the tire would sit here horizontally and it pushes towards the rim of the of the wheel. And if you're not careful, this will mar the aluminum wheel. To counteract that movement of the force coming towards me, they put this piece of steel here to catch the wheel so it can go ahead and push down on the bead and break it without scooting the wheel out at you. That also will mar the wheel. The next thing that I didn't like about it is it sits on the floor. I came across with the idea this is going to t uh, break my motorcycle tire beads. I don't want to be kneeling on the floor looking up underneath the tire to make sure I got necessary blocking here to keep my disc or the the rear gear from being damaged by uh, anything down below. So I wanted to get it up so I could look at it, get it all set, then break the beads and watch what's going on as this arm is coming down. And I'll show you how I get that guy up there without straining my back. Just push that guy right up, no problem. I like it. Walk him into there and we're all set. Yeah, not that anybody needs to hear this, but what really impresses me is how much Errors in these tires here. It just goes on and on. Again, these are 35 inch by 12 and a half. 15 LT tires. They are 18 years old. Tire manufacturers say, under no circumstance, no matter how the tire is going to store, use, whatever, you can use a tire that's over 10 years. So these are close to twice their lifetime here, and they are well cracked. But you can see all the cracking here, and that's throughout the tire. This is one of the wheels I pulled off, or took the tire off of this wheel here earlier. The, uh, this is the outside bead, bead that you would see, or the edge of the tire you would see. You can see how the, this bead here to the drop center is just a short distance. When you come down here to the back bead, across the, the safety bead, it's a long way down here. So this, this one has always been easier to break than, than this one here.
like I said, a lot of air on these tires. Top speed, first speed, simple one. And I think because of the design, the aluminum wheels tend to have tougher to break their, their beads and tougher to pull the tires off. That's just the way it is, I think. This guy looks like he's been running in the field for a while. Pull of mud. Yeah, he's pulling. broke free. That wasn't so bad. So, eight beads, seven pretty stiff, and one from hell. There we go. Good. Well, let me give you some basic dimensions here in case somebody would like to try this at home. This is a inch and a half square tube. It's a quarter inch walls, inch and a half square tube. It is about 12 and a half inches long. And why 12 and a half inches? Because 13 is an unlucky number. So. This arc is about, I think it was 10 inches, might be, oh, I lied. Outside arc here is 11 inches. The radius is approximately what it would take for a 20 inch wheel. And that's how I designed that. To, to make this bend here, this is a quarter inch piece of steel, was two inches wide. It is now about an inch and a half wide. So I just cut a series of curves in here an inch apart, put it in a fixture and then beat the daylights out of it until I got the, the curve I wanted. Then I came back, welded it to the this lower plate here. And you can see that I did the same sort of thing. I got saw curves from the opposite side here uh, saw a curve here, saw a curve here, and one here, and then just bent it until I got the shape to fit, fit this. What I wanted on this, and this is probably more important here, is I wanted a uh, 15 degree 
rise here from this plane. And what did I say to 15? Well, 30 looked to be too much. Zero was not enough. I wanted something that would force the, the shoe or the shovel into the, into the wheel, going this direction here. I wanted to force it down this way and it could scoot out away. So what I wound up in, in here, this is actually about 10 degrees from, from the horizontal plane here. What I did is bent this, I welded it, and then I took and laid it up against this flat piece here, the flat arc, and then beat on the arc till it got it so it matched up to this when I raised it up. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but just a lot of beating on the steel to get it to fit what I wanted it to. Welded it on here, welded it to it, and then welded the, the kerf closed on both sides, and then I just took my four and a half inch grinder and ground that flat. Now, I haven't dressed this up to make it look pretty, uh, but it'll, it'll serve the function, and I, I will eventually clean it all up, grind down the garbage wells of mine and get rid of the, the crud, paint it, and it'll look just fine. The uh, plate that I used here is three, inch, three inches wide. So this is three inches wide. It's a 3 16 flat stack. And I welded it. Seams on both sides there. So you can see I, the, uh, I told you I made a saw curve that came in from this side here. I put a, a weld bead right across there, ground that, that off, and so now it's, it's fairly smooth. Some, you know, we call it heat distortion, heat marks, whatever, you can see that. But that takes care of that. I think that sh should be self-explanatory. All the holes you see are half inch diameter. This handle here is a full five feet long. And it is one heavy puppy. So, that's standing on the ground. That's five foot from the ground. I was going to use three sixteenths, but after having bent three quarter inch rod, uh, I thought, ah, we're, we're not going to bend this guy. So I'll take the, I'll take the weight. This piece here is two inch square tubing, a uh, quarter inch thick wall. And the reason for, for that is take an inch and a half tube and it'll just slide right in there after you do a, a little, uh, finessing with your grinder to get it to fit right. What I did is I welded it to here and took my grinder and cut off this side here. I already had drilled the holes. These holes here are about an inch spacing. I don't know if I'll ever need more than just the one hole, but I put them in there just to have some flexibility. I do not want some clearance when this handle comes down between here and here but this probably could move a little bit in that way. This here is cut back and radius to give room here so the handle can go up or down without, without binding. This is uh, 12 and a half inches up from my my bench surface. And so that's the surface that the, the tire rests on. Uh, that there is 13 and a half inches from here to here. Again, why 13 and a half? Well, Miss Moraz says it was an unlucky number, so she's my fifth grade teacher, she should know. Two and a half inch square tubing. This other stuff here is 3 sixteenths. Again, just like this other piece here. This here is a two inch, quarter inch wall tubing, square tubing. Weld it, holes drilled, and then this, this opposite side here removed with a 
uh, four and a half inch angle grinder. I left this thing down because I might put a feature on here to grab a hold of my tire changer. If you see that video, you'll see the tire changer mounts in the other receiver on my welding bench. And you just might use this to grab hold of the, the uh, rod, the axle for the, the tire changer. I'm not sure yet, but that's why that is down like that. And I think that covers all the, all the dimensions that it might be somewhat critical. I did bias these holes out. They're not centered in this surface here, so they're out just a little bit to give a little more clearance for the, the handle. Um, maybe I should have done just a little bit more. Uh, I don't know. 